Anyway, sorry, my friend. We we were talk before before you arrived. Yes. We were talking, and then it kind of uh, then things yes. other themes came up with other people. So, uh -huh. and we got to the point where I was explaining why I was a Catholic, wasn't it? Yeah. And I can't remember. After that, I think we uh, didn't get very far. Yeah, we uh, sort of. I think the last thing we talked about was was uh, Peter and Paul and Protestantism. And, uh... Yes, and yes, that's right. And I was saying how I thought the papacy was, uh, although the papacy can. Um, it's an office established by Christ, and popes can be overbearing, and it, there's, a, there's a right to challenge popes, as we see with St. Paul. Um, but then, to be fair to St. Peter, he's prudent in dealing with the, the issue of the Jews who don't like eating with Gentiles, and Paul is just, the truth is the truth, and you just get on with it. That's right. Like an Olympic, as my phrase was then. I, I think Peter was very, uh, quite conservative. Yes. Uh, and Paul was a bit more, sort of, a bit more... Expanding the, uh, you know, uh, what's the word? Uh, a bit more broad-minded because he, he was yeah. the apostle to the Gentiles, wasn't he? Yeah, yeah. Peter was just the apostle to Jews. Yes, but I think if if it were, if it were contemporary, Saint Peter, if we Saint, Saint Paul would go in amongst a bunch of pagans and tell them they're a bunch of pagans, yeah. but Saint Peter would go amongst them and be much more subtle. Right. He'd get the message across, yeah. but you can tell that Saint Peter, in my view, you can tell that Saint Peter spent three and a half years with Jesus who shaved off the rough edges yes. of Peter, right. where St. Paul didn't have that ministry. And what people don't think about is this difference, that it actually has a, an effect upon how one evangelizes it's bound to. If Peter and the other 12, the other 11, um, minus Judas Iscariot, were with Jesus for so many years, he's gonna show how to evangelize in a way differently from how Paul would know. Paul was a, was a, a great evangelist, but in a different way from the other apostles and it has to be different because he never had the training that they had it's one thing to say okay he had the miracle on the road to damascus that's true and he and he was a mass, major conversion and he's infused with huge amounts of knowledge so but that a doesn't Pharisee, he was a, would have been a scholar yes of, uh, yes of the law. yes so he was perfectly primed he just needed nudging in the right way and then he could splurge out all this knowledge on the christian theme and with that guidance of God, the Holy Spirit, produce amazing theology. But the, but the character formation, which was there with the, with the apostles, wasn't there with him. He had to, something was done instantaneously with him, but his old character remained. That's how I see it anyway, common sense way. So why is it then? Well, you might have specific questions you want to put to me or specific things you want to say. So go ahead before I say anything more. Well, I mean, you've been very eloquent uh, so far. I think uh, I can understand the Catholic position on why it is the, the one true uh, uh, Catholic Apostolic Church. Yeah. Uh, and I understand that argument. I mean, obviously, the Protestants will have uh, their critique of, of, of Catholicism. Yes. Uh, I mean, uh, from what I've heard, the Anglican Church was based on the uh, you know, uh, uh, divorce of Henry VIII. And, mm -hmm. Uh, Luther was, uh, you know, a monk who yes. ended up marrying a nun. So yes. he broke his vows. Catherine Bohr, I think her name was. Yeah, and she broke her vows, which, you know, uh, not a good moral example, I would say. Uh, I don't know about Calvin and Zwingli and the other reformers, but they were those two were Catholic priests. Okay, yeah. right. and there was John Knox, I think, in Scotland. Scotland, yeah. I don't know what he was. 